sponsored by Premier Guns. Here's Newsnight with Alex Sayer. Well, good evening, everybody. Mostly fantastic news for you this week. So, let's have a look, shall we? Who donated £12,000 and 25 pence to the Gamekeeper's Welfare Trust very recently? Yes, that's right. Showful, scoful, whatever you want to call them. I've recently bought one of their products, the Over the Top Fleece, and I've managed to wear it out already. So I don't know what your thoughts are on that particular clothing brand, but well done to them for giving so much money to such a worthy cause. Speaking of gamekeeping, the National Gamekeepers Organisation have come up with a fantastic way of combating what can only be described as a fuel crisis. You can receive much of a discount, look at this, from all these places including Shell and Esso if you are a member of the National Gamekeepers Organisation and you don't have to be a gamekeeper to do that and you get lots of benefits with the insurance. Here's just a couple for you to look at. And if you are a farmer, you also get 5% off at Morrison's checkout. Have a look at this. You just take your farmer's discount card with you. Moving on to sporting, I just want to give a big shout out to Premier Gun sponsor tutor Isabel Cartledge. She's going from strength to strength. Look at this. And she's up for nomination in the CPSA Awards of the Year. Do follow the Premier Guns Facebook page to see her progress on her shooting journey. She has been shortlisted as a CPSA finalist of the year in the Young Shots category, sponsored by Laporte, along with Barney Eastman, Matthew Paley, Toby Hurstfield and Jasper Pierce. Lines open today for the CPSA Awards 2022 and by lines I mean you can vote online so please take a look at that. I've told you all about the categories, let's get voting for the people that we appreciate in our sport. And just before we move on to the legislation updates around and about the UK, and speaking of sporting, I'd just like you to have a look at this absolutely brand new gun. Tell me what you think to this. I think this is something just absolutely different. It's blown me out of the water. People make tweaks here and there. They develop existing things, but from what I can see, this looks like something totally different. This is from Beretta, the SL2 launch edition. Just look at those shapes. I'm really looking forward to seeing one of these in the flesh. Moving on to legislation, the government has today voted to introduce a ban on the import of hunting trophies to the UK. This is a uh, an interesting topic and I have a statement here from Christopher Graphius, my friend at Basque, which I shall read to you now, although not in his voice. Hunting, which can include the taking of trophies, has been shown by scientists, practitioners and governments to benefit conservation and local communities and boost the value of the species hunted. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this. Here's Diggory Haydock just to tell us a little bit more about trophy hunting and the like. Over to you, Diggory. The import ban on legally hunted trophies that the government's pushing through at the moment does seem to me to be a very emotionally driven piece of legislation. It certainly isn't being um, motivated by evidence or by pragmatism or by genuine conservation um, outcomes. We can see quite clearly um, where endangered species or species on the brink of, um, of extinction have been brought back. Uh, purely using hunting as a means of doing it. The, uh, the example that we might cite would be the Tajik Markor, um, which was basically hunted to the brink of extinction, primarily for meat by people in a, uh, backwards areas, if you like, mountainous areas where there's very little protein. And these things are basically protein on the hoof as far as the locals are concerned, and they saw no reason to not shoot them and eat them. Um, uh, the, the only reason they were given to not shoot them and eat them was when um, people came along and said, well, if you don't shoot these, uh, we'll, we'll bring somebody in from America or from, from a Western country who's prepared to hunt one and pay upwards of $100,000, uh, and we'll only let them come and hunt three the first year, five, six, 
by the time the population's picked up again. And in return for that, the locals suddenly realised that by not shooting these animals and eating them, um, they would get proper cash. Uh, and therefore they looked after them. And as a result, those animals have come back from the brink of extinction to not even being on the endangered list anymore, according to the ICUN. So that's an absolutely tangible example of where an endangered species has been brought back purely with a hunting conservation program, giving that animal value to the people who ultimately get to say whether they wipe it out or look after it. And um, in these regions, the byproduct of that increase in the markhor numbers has been a benefit to snow leopards, which, which hunt markhor, which obviously were having problems because they were running out of um, prey to eat. Um, when markhor numbers improve, snow leopards do better. So everybody's a winner. The local people are getting money in an area where money is very hard to come by. The animal that was endangered and was being predated by people is now being protected by those people. And the, the, high, the predators higher up the food chain who rely on numbers of those animals to be able to feed themselves and their young also did well. So these pro programs are proven to work. Now, any piece of ground has got a maximum number of any given species that it can usefully hold. And it doesn't matter whether that's your lawn with rabbits on it. You have two rabbits living on your lawn, you don't have a problem, you have a nice lawn, you have two rabbits. You have a thousand rabbits on your lawn, you don't have a lawn, and pretty soon the rabbits have nothing to eat, they get diseased and they all die. Uh, that's not to anybody's benefit. Africa, um, other parts of the world where habitat is under pressure, species are under pressure, exactly the same process uh, manifests itself, just on a different scale. So where you have too many lions for a, an area to sustain, or too many elephants for an area to sustain, it makes absolute sense to pay for the management and the protection of those areas, the anti-poaching, the anti-logging, uh, all the other pro uh, protective programs that are paid for by sport hunting. Thank you for that, Diggory. Over in Northern Ireland, a bill to ban the hunting of wild animals with dogs has indeed failed. It was defeated by 45 votes to 38 at the beginning of the week. Scotland are facing a similar thing. There's a consultation which is live at the moment. I'll put a link in the description for you so that we can all answer that and help to support Scotland. One of the great things that we can do to help support hunting in this country is to attend a Boxing Day meet. People have been trying to stop these and have failed. And you may have heard that Royal Mint have decided to scrap their 125 year commemorative coin for the National Trust, who, as I'm sure you're aware, have recently banned uh, trail hunting on their land. And residents in Sherborne have recently accused the National Trust of passive vandalism, which is an interesting phrase and not strong enough by half, in my opinion. Thank you so much for watching. That should bring you about up to date. If there's anything I've missed, please do let me know. And it may now be worth following my Facebook page because as I recently reported, Brewdog gave £5,000 to Wild Justice and that reached over 57,000 people, probably 60,000 people by now. So do take a look at the Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Proudly sponsored by Premier Gun.